Hey, Pyro, how's it going? Welcome to another Bear Woods Facebook Live. I'm super excited to be here. My name is Jani Lizenby. Uh, if you guys haven't met me before, I'm the Pyro Professor over at BurnSavvy.com and Burn Savvy Academy. And um, I am the artist behind Red Roof Barn. We're going to be burning more of the cow. If you guys have been following along, um, I've been doing this. Can you guys see that? All year long. In the description, you're going to find uh, links to all of the tools that I use. So if you want to look up the Colwa Detailer, if you want to look up the Rounded Shader or any of those kinds of things, you can find all that information there. You can also find where to find me over on Burn Savvy and my social media accounts and all of that in the description. So feel free to pop in over there and go check that out. And I'm going to show you the nib I am using. So this here, see if we can get it to focus, this is the rounded shader. And that's what I've been using for most of the work here. I love this nib, this nib is really versatile. All right, so now I'm going to turn on my burner. I'm gonna set my pen down on it. If you guys want to see the machine I'm using, sorry, it's so close, Colwood Detailer, my favorite machine. So I will be using that. So what I am doing here is I am going to just add some more of this, um, basically blocking in this baby cow here, this calf, handsome little dude. And you'll see that I twist and turn uh, this nib a lot. This is actually something that I teach in my shading course is that one of the things you need to do is twist it. You gotta make sure that you are utilizing all of those different sides. Okay, so I'm gonna put in a little more of the hair. How hard is it to learn your heat settings on, on pyrography tools? Uh, that is a great question. I think it depends on the person and it depends on the tool because um, the a biggest thing about this is trying the tool, making sure that you know what you're comfortable with, because you'll want to make sure that you're working at a pace that you're happy with. And so if um, if you're working with a, say this one's a Colwood detailer, but if you were using a Colwood Super Pro, that one is hotter. And so your heat levels would have to be lower. But that is actually something that I teach my students how to do in the shading course. And actually I teach it in the learn and burn too, how to get familiar with the heat because heat is your best friend and your worst enemy when it comes to pyrography, right? You have to learn how to control it. So once you can learn to control your technique, then you can pretty much um, adjust it to work with any heat. But I find that it's easier to adjust the heat <laughs> and to, to cater to my technique. I didn't have, um, there weren't a whole lot of YouTube videos out when I was starting out and I didn't understand the books as well. And so it was really hard. I had to just learn it by trial and error. Okay. So another thing is you can see I'm using my speed to help with the darkness or the lightness. And then I don't have to change my heat so much. However, when I find that I'm doing lots of dark, I will just crank it hotter. And when I'm doing lots of light work, I will turn that heat down. And I'm kind of, I've been outlining just a little bit, but for the most part, you don't want to do hard outlines when you are trying to do realism. realism. You want to do edges, basically. Because if you think about nature, there are lots of edges, natural edges, where things come to an end, but they don't, they're not um, hardcore outlines, right? That's very rare in nature. So when you're doing realism, you want to have less of an outline and more of an edge. I think that hair is starting to come along. Let me get some fun shape there. Just adding in some details here. There we go. All right. Only you will see your fault. Honestly, it's so true. We are our own worst critics. Am I right? 
we oftentimes look at something and think, oh my goodness, that's horrible. I can't believe it. And I Nobody look, right? And then you show it to somebody else and they don't even see it until you point it out. And sometimes even then they still don't see it. <laughs> so you have to remember to be, be patient with yourself, be kind to yourself and realize that half the time the mistakes that you make can actually be blended into your work. When I learned that, my pyrography suddenly went so much faster. So don't kick yourself, don't kill yourself over all of the little mistakes. Try to work it in. If it still bugs you when you're done, go ahead and fix it. But until then, don't don't bother with it, you know? Just try to work it in. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit guy's got some baby horns here so I'm gonna put that horn on there I'm just going to scumble that in add a little bit more there I want that to really show up but not be too sharp because usually it's got a little bit of a blunt end on those on those horns there okay Coming back down, I'm going to get into some of this shorter fur around the face or shorter hair. I know this is hair, right? <laughs> Pretty sure that's hair. I'm going to turn this back down, maybe about a five. Try that. Okay, let's see here. Add a bit of a hairy chin. Just a little bit. Maybe a straggler or two and then come back down. Another thing that you guys can do is turn the piece, turn the wood. So if you want to come this other direction, you can still pull it towards you. I don't know if you guys can see that. If you turn it this other direction, you can still pull it towards you. Okay, I'm going to give a little more shadow to that. And let's see. If we darken in some of those spots here, mm, I want that to have a little more shadow in that darkest spot. Okay, and I think we've blended in a lot of that knot. I don't know if you guys saw, but there was a big brown stripe there and a big brown stripe there. And that was a natural blemish in the wood. You can kind of see, I, I just, darkened that spot. I'd rather, rather this little calf look like he's smiling. Actually, Bear Woods has graciously agreed to sponsor some burn boxes. If you guys haven't seen the burn boxes, those things are awesome. The burn boxes have uh, not just wood. I mean, they do have wood, which is fantastic. They have different kinds of wood. They have the live edge wood, and then they have uh, wood that is um, clean cut, laser cut, and you can try those different kinds of woods. And they have hardware so you can finish it. So many places just give you the wood. Here, Bear Woods is actually giving you some key rings. They're giving you some uh, hanging hardware. It's fantastic. You can actually do a whole piece. So go check out the burn boxes those are also over on bearwood.com and you're going to get one if you join me at the retreat this October. So feel free to come join me there, burnsavvy.com forward slash retreat. And I'm, I'm super excited. We've got a great group already. I'm, I'm super excited about the retreaters that are coming. So I hope you will join me and, uh, looks like we are out of time. So feel free to go check it out on YouTube. Check us out on, um, on our websites, bearwoods.com or bearwood.com. I always do that and burn savvy. And we are going to continue to work on this happy little cow piece. So I hope you guys enjoyed it tonight. I hope you guys learned something. Uh, I really enjoy this. So thanks for joining me. I'll see you guys next time. Later pyro.